There are a few differences between the first IUI cycle and this one. These cost $187 hairs. So to have insurance stress on top of that is just so ridiculous. You had big follicles, baby. I did, and I'm surging. I knew it. It came back as a zero. Frustrating and misleading. This is our first ever injection for fertility. We're thinking baby right now. We're thinking baby right now. Said you might experience a little cramping and I'm like, this is more than a little cramping. Hello everybody, it is Dingle here and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I hope you all are doing super super duper well and today my friends, this is going to be the start of our second IUI cycle video. I have very mixed feelings about it. If you guys are going through an infertility journey or what do you say? Is it infertility journey, fertility journey? Not really sure, but we're dealing with infertility and it's a journey. But if you guys are on the same path, you know that the beginning of a next cycle is devastating, but then for me at least after a day or so after the first day of just like despair letting myself just feel all the feelings it's hopeful like now we have a fresh start and a fresh opportunity to hopefully have our miracle baby like what like even saying that makes me want to cry actually <laughs> today is january 6th 2022 and the last cycle that we did was in november and then we took a break for december to enjoy the holidays and now we are here my cycle started on Monday and then yesterday was day three so I started Clomid day three and I will continue that through Sunday this Sunday so Wednesday to Sunday but there are a few differences between the first IUI cycle that we did and this one upcoming so I want to kind of bring you guys through that and then this morning we got a special delivery a special package with special medical things in that so I want to go through that and open that with you guys after let's have a seat shall we so for the first IUI cycle we took things more consistently conservatively based on the recommendations obviously from my doctor especially with our lab results and Jack's results and everything we went forward with a cycle that had Clomid 100 milligrams for five days like we're doing now but there was no follicle monitoring because I told them that I ovulate regularly which is true I'm always getting a peak I'm always seeing the lines everything always seems pretty good feeling the symptoms based off of my lab results which also suggests that I did in fact ovulate around the time that they would expect we went forward with just Clomid and no follicle monitoring and only at home tests for me And then I would call with a peak result on my ovulation strip from there They would schedule the IUI procedure accordingly if you guys watch that first video I will leave it linked down below you'll remember that the at-home strips like of all months all of a sudden I was just super unsure about them I was getting results like all over the place I was getting a darker line at first when I I first started testing and then got kind of going to lighter and then randomly got a peak like randomly one day and the clear blue ones with the smiley faces always showed goose egg zero even though the at-home tests were showing some sort of a darkish line sometimes so it was just like all over the place and I felt very not confident all of a sudden with taking the at-home tests and then basing my IUI procedure off of those but we went through with it it obviously was unsuccessful because we are here today so going into this one I knew I wanted to record quest follicle monitoring so that I would be just more confident in the timing of everything. We'll have more control. I really appreciated that they wanted to go in with a more conservative approach and just have it as natural as possible without as many medicines or poking and prodding and things like that. So I'm glad we did that at first because you never know it could have been successful but I'm very excited to go into this one with just a little bit more monitoring reassurance that type of thing. So this cycle is going to be probably what you guys see in a lot of other IUI videos if you guys watch them if you're like me and you guys have become obsessed with them and here's how everything is going to go down like I said I have Clomid for days 3 through 10 or I don't even know basically Wednesday through Sunday and I take two 50 milligram pills equaling 100 milligrams of Clomid a day I take those between 6 and 8 like my nurse told me to and I appreciate that because any side effects that I might be feeling 
I kind of kind of sleep through them so I don't feel any negative side effects really on Clomid. But then next week on the 12th, which is a Wednesday, she gave me the option between Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday of next week to go in for an ultrasound where they'll check on my follicle progression, how big they are, etc. And I chose the 12th, which is the earliest day that she had suggested because based on that initial ultrasound and where my follicles are at, I'll either schedule the IUI and the trigger shot and all of that stuff to actually happen, or they'll want me to come in the next day or the day after that if the follicles are still smaller than they would like to trigger at. So I wanted to get the first appointment just in case they're good on that day. You know, you never know. But between the 12th and 14th where they're monitoring my follicles, they'll decide when they look good. And then that is where the trigger shot comes in. And that is what is sitting over there. I have zero idea what to expect actually with this trigger shot. No one has told me how to do that. And basically, if you guys don't know that trigger shot, I forget what it's called, but I'll find out in just a second. That will trigger ovulation. So there's full control on triggering ovulation. And then in those next 24 hours, I'll be ovulating and that's when they'll line up the IUI procedure. So it's just a little more control, a little more medicine, a little more prodding and poking and things like that. But if I'm gonna go through this, if I'm gonna do this, I want a little more control over it. And I want a little more reassurance on timing versus hopefully it works because it's been nearly two years of hopefully it works. So I'm over it. Let's do this thing. <laughs> All right, we've got this thing here on the top. It says open promptly, refrigerated items and clothes. So jaw delivered like maybe an hour or so ago, so I'm not too worried, but I am. Jeez, this is a steak knife. I thought this would work. Okay, there's a packing slip in here. And when I open it, it looks like this. There's a white box on top and it says stop. Open this cooler now, refrigerated items and clothes. And it says packed to withstand temperature variations. This is freaking intense, you guys. I'm trying not to get worked up about it, you know? Like I'm trying to just kind of take one day at a time and just do the medications that they recommend and say and all this stuff. But it's a little intimidating when it all kind of comes like this, don't you think? Oh my gosh. And all of this box for one pre-filled syringe of Ovidrill. That's what it is. For everyone that's already gone through this, like, oh God, like so many times, you guys are probably like, wow, she's such a noob. And I'm okay. I'm happy to be a noob. I'm happy to just show you the human side of all of this. And I am not going to pretend I know what I'm doing at all. So let's figure it out together. It says, immediately upon receiving your package, check each item against this list and store medications accordingly to enclosed instructions. I suppose we are going to get to these instructions soon. My Ovidrill, by the way, after insurance costs $187, so $187. I can't see what my insurance kind of gave me as a break, but I know that they ran it against the insurance. And then because the contents of this were under $500, they had us pay $15 in shipping. We had to ship ours. I guess this only came from a fancy type of pharmacy that was located down in Massachusetts. So we had to ship ours in order to get it to us. It says, remove your medicine from the refrigerator approximately 30 minutes before use. So it goes in the fridge. And that's something that I feel like I could have denounced from it being in the fridge already. These cost 187 doll hairs. This stuff adds up, oh my gosh, so fast, you guys. We'll see you next week. It's just a side note, and I have no idea what kind of footage I have at this point because it's been so long of me just collecting footage of just any appointments or any updates or anything like that. But speaking of cost for everything, I think one of the main stressors at the beginning of all of this was insurance and going back and forth between insurance company and their office and what they cover and the question of if I'm covered at all and then what that means for Jack and I financially just to have a baby. It's like I, I don't blame and I do understand why all of this stuff does cost money. Like these doctors are so qualified, they're so professional. I have had such a great experience with all of them and their services have a right to be paid for. But holy crap, 
like we pay insurance every single month we pay it out of our paycheck in order to have insurance and then the fact that it just takes this much stress or effort to find out if something is covered or have discrepancies in what you thought was covered or whatnot like that is so unnecessary especially for something like fertility when the main stressor that you should be like trying to manage and control and you know work through is conceiving a child that you've been wanting for x number of years so to have insurance stress and just like random life admin stuff on top of that is just so ridiculous like I that is something that I kind of expected because I've always had issues with insurance I feel like but I just feel like in a process like this when we run into roadblocks with insurance and medical and all of that stuff it's just it's just even more frustrating because of just the, uh, the principle of the matter so to speak I'm just not very happy with that part of everything but what day is it? It is follicular monitoring day. Follicular monitoring day. FM. You're at MAC at the house. Oh my god. This is early for us, you guys. It's 7.45. I like waking up this early. It's just so cozy in our bed. Our bed is way too cozy. Guys, this is the first time we're going to be monitoring my follicles and I'm excited. Like, I'm definitely starting to feel my normal symptoms of ovulation. Yeah, today is blood work and ultrasound. I haven't been very good at knowing exactly what we're looking for today, like every time I go in. It's just that if I know too far in advance all this information, it can get very overwhelming and they know yeah. all the information. So it's just better for me to go in and ask the question that day versus get overly like into the numbers and all of that stuff. Last time you had cancer. Because last time I convinced myself I had cancer. I and was so crying. <laughs> I literally was like full blown thought I had cancer for one of my, my lab results. Let's go monitor some follicles, folks. So, guys, we went in at 8 10 and it's 8 28 now, and I had blood work and a full ultrasound done. Yeah. So, that was really, it was fast, which is great. I didn't want to linger any longer than we had to, for sure. But what'd you think? This was your first time seeing that ultrasound. It's wild. Guys, you should have seen Max. She took that camera and just went to town. <laughs> I did. I wasn't holding it at the end. But it was really cool. No, it's just like, it, it always blows me away how nice and so it is sweet. so sweet and like normal. You know, like the bedside manner of every single person that we've met so far, I'm knocking on wood that it continues to be that way. It's just so nice. Accommodating, comforting. Yeah. Yeah. And they're they're also funny too. Like they're like, they're doctor, so funny. yeah, our doctor's funny. This nurse was funny. She like at one point was like, you see what she has to go through? And like, she's teasing. She's totally teasing. I, and I get yeah. that, yeah. And he's like, yeah, I'm just gonna oh, yeah, sit no, here. I'm just gonna sit here. <laughs> my part is small. <laughs> yeah, my part is very small in this whole thing. Yeah. It was really wild to like And we see got to ask ovary. questions and she was answering them like what we were looking yeah. at and like it was really cool. You got to see your Eggo waffles. You got to see, so guys. How many did you have? Was there like I, five on one side? I think there was only a few or she only measures the prominent ones. Okay. Because at my baseline one where they just went in wanting to see the follicles I had, I think it was like day three of the cycle I had before. So it was pretty early on in the cycle and they just get like a baseline. I had eight follicles on one side and seven on the other. Yeah. And this time, I think she only measured four total, but I thought I saw more. It's just only some follicles will develop and mature every month. Yeah. Um, usually it's only one. The thing that I wish that she could tell me is exactly what number we're looking for, mm. but Based on my blood work, as well as those results, they'll give me a call later today with the information, so we won't have to wait very long at all. Yeah. Her response was, it just totally depends on what we're looking for today. Yeah. And our doctor will get to look at all of that, but I wish she was like, we're looking based on what you're doing today and all this stuff, 20. Like, I wanted to know the number, but guys, there was a follicle, I think it was all on my left side, right? Yeah, it was all on your left side. Follicle at 17 and a follicle all the way at 20. 
And she even like made kind of an exclamation like, oh wow, like, and they, they were big. You had big follicles, baby. I did. Let's go. Which is very exciting. I don't know, you just always hope. This is the first time I'm seeing them at this stage in the cycle. And so it's like, I know that on my sticks, I ovulate, you know, like based on like the sticks and the lines, but to be able to actually see that I am developing like as I usually see on other YouTube videos, which is so cool why women like share these things so yeah. I can like see that. It's just very comforting to me. I have two thoughts. Tell me. One, I just saw like the potential like start of little Jimmy. You did. I hate when I you know. call him that. I know. I had to like We're not naming over. our kid Jimmy. Um, the second thought I had was like a TikTok popped into my head and it's like me monitoring my follicles. Go bad bitch, go bad bitch. Go. That's a really good so, TikTok I idea. I think you should probably do that. I'm excited to get a call later today. Hell yeah, Bubba. Office, how are you? I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. So I'm calling to let you know we got your results in and your next steps. And it looks like you are starting to surge. Okay. So I want you to do the trigger shot tonight. Okay. And then your IUI tomorrow. Okay. So um, your partner will need to be here one hour before the procedure. Okay. Him at one o'clock okay. and me at two o'clock. I've never done a trigger shot. Is there a video or anything that I can watch? Well, I know that if you go, um, like Village Pharmacy has some um, videos. Okay. It's totally on our website as well. Um, it's basically you just give it to yourself um, in the soft part of your, you know, you just pinch a little bit in your belly. Okay. And and you put it in, you know, the fatty part. It's not a, it's not a, in the muscle type injection. It's sub Q. Pretty simple. It's like a pen, so it, it's okay. pretty easy. Yeah. Okay, great. Yep. Is yeah. Is there any time tonight I should do it specifically? Um, you can do it. Um, actually, you could do it today at uh, any time. Because okay. you're kind of coming in tomorrow, so if you wanted to do it right now, you could go ahead and do it. Okay. Thank okay. you so much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. You're welcome. We'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Bye bye. I'm glad I record these things because sometimes when they call, like most of the time when they call, I don't have a pen. You guys have no idea how many times I've rewatched my own footage to get instructions and to re like reaffirm my like the instructions and like my questions and all that oh my gosh i'm so glad we went in today because they gave me for my first follicle monitoring appointment they gave me the option between today tomorrow and friday and i chose today because i was like well i want to catch it early if it's happening early and then get another appointment if it's like not quite ready and they want to see me again i want like the runway you know so i took the earliest day and i'm surging I knew it. I felt it. I totally felt it and I knew my follicles were massive today. Oh my god, tomorrow we're getting an IUI. Hi friends. So it's been uh, like maybe an hour or so after I got that phone call and I'm crazy because even though I know that I'm for sure surging, like they did blood work, they've done an ultrasound, they checked my follicles. So we like super know that I am surging and ready to go. I was actually really curious what my ovulation strips would say. I haven't done ovulation strips this whole week because I knew we were gonna be monitoring. So I went ahead and I did an ovulation strip, I think when I came back from the office this morning and I just dipped another one since getting the phone call cause like it was confirmed and it looks like that line is definitely developing nicely. This one I did earlier today, which it's not exactly as dark as the control line, but it's definitely getting there. But I thought it was interesting because again, my blood works as I'm surging. They saw I'm surging with my follicles, but I'm mostly curious about this one. I'm I'm very very curious about it because you guys know that I had such trouble with these the first IUI cycle that we did I never throughout the whole week of fertile window ever got even a blinking smiley face which indicates that you are like close to or you're like high fertility or whatever yeah zero means low flashing smiley means high and stand still smiley face is peak and they wanted me to call on peak, but I was getting lines on those other Amazon tests that I have just I was getting the lines like I normally kind of would they were kind of all over the place But at least I was getting something and then this always said zero 
always. So I'm super curious now that we know for a fact that I'm surging, what this is gonna say. I'm actually really, really curious about it. And hopefully it clears up any questions that anyone else has out there that also hasn't been able to get a smiley face with the clear blue ovulation predictor test. It's been a few minutes, you guys. And that is a big fat goose egg. I don't trust Bub. It came back as a zero. Is this tested? It's a zero. What's that mean? Is that a- Nothing. Literally nothing. <laughs> These things were giving me so much stress first round because they needed a solid smiley face. Maybe I just got a pack of faulty tests because if it was like, oh yeah, if they tested for like one thing and they were like, yeah, it looks like you're ovulating, you know, maybe there's like some variable, but they took blood and they saw my follicles. And they know I am and yeah. this is not picking up on it at all. So That's so weird. Weird. Frustrating. It's frustrating so and misleading. Frustrating. Guys, it's time. If you don't like needles, it's not it's not time for you. I'm still so bloated. Oh my gosh. My little belly. We watched the video that was recommended by the group, the pharmacy that gave us this. So if you guys are curious, I will leave that recommended video down below from our pharmacy, but obviously ask your nurse, ask your doctor. We have a pre-filled Ovidril syringe. I'm going to hold my skin where he's gonna inject it and Jack's gonna help me with the injection. This is our first ever injection for fertility. Okay, what side do you want it on? I think this side because I think I'm ovulating on this side. What do you think? On there. I have adrenaline pumping through my veins. I have a whole lot more or something else. I'm nervous for the side effects, but at the same time, it's like I don't have a choice. I'm gonna do this anyway, so. Holding the needle, getting all the air out. It has a little bead. I think you push it up so that there's no air at the top. You push it up until there's a little bit coming out. There you go. Okay, I'm nervous. It's okay. Okay. It's gonna be over. Do you have your glasses on? I have my glasses on. It's good enough. That is lovely. Okay, I don't wanna look. You don't have to look. It's gonna be like one, two, three, pinch, okay? One, two, three, pinch. You can let go. We're going in. Good. Nice job, baby. That's it. That's it. You're all done. Paralyzed with fear. Oh, you had another procedure today. I had so much did. done to me today. What do you need now? I was poked and prodded I all day. No, even by your hubby. What the? I know. You're not supposed to poke and prod oh, me. Oh, man. Okay. What can I get you? We triggered. That's crazy. You just. You got triggered. You're triggered. I am triggered You're right a now. Triggered individual. Thank you for doing that, bub. My pleasure. Yeah, definitely wasn't bad, you guys. That's now I'm curious about side effects. I know Jack wanted to go to the gym. When did you want to go to the gym? We can go in the next half hour if you want. We can go now. I'm like nervous because what if I just feel like absolute poop? You know, so I just. I don't know. There's no pressure for you to come to the gym. This is new mm -hmm. for you, so. I so. might forego the gym today just for this first injection, I think. It'd be nice to know that I'm at home to feel side effects versus somewhere else I can't control. Are you excited? Oh, yeah. What are your thoughts right now? Yeah, I wasn't sure when the second IUI would come. Like when mm. I was talking to Ailey, I was like, oh, maybe it'll be like this weekend or next week, but literally. Oh, like, like, like the procedure itself. Yeah. Yeah. But now it's like, all right, we're We on. knew it was going to be this week though, because. But I didn't think it was going to be like, it's Wednesday, it's going to happen tomorrow. I know. That's still like midweek at my break. I'm so happy I opted for that first day. Yeah because who knows what would have happened tomorrow. I probably would have ovulated already. Exactly, it's so cool. Yeah. I know it's happening, and now you know, and like we're- I just feel like so much more- The fruits of- Assured. Your labor. About it, you know? Yeah. Like everything feels like controlled. Like some, like sometimes I'm like, I wanna do this naturally. I want like no intervention. But like, if I'm gonna do intervention, if we're gonna get medical help to grow our family, I'm gonna want control if that's an option, you know? It's exciting. Yeah. I love you. Love you too. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> but it is IUI day, and I wanted to give an update on how I felt after my trigger shot last night. Within the first couple of hours, I would say, I just kind of started feeling blah, but it wasn't any symptoms that like ramped up super fast. I think I was just most worried about those types of symptoms, like cramps or like nausea or anything like that, and nothing like that. Just nothing beyond um, just normal ovulation. I don't even want to call it pain, it's just sensation. 
sensation that I usually feel when I'm ovulating, so nothing out of the ordinary there. But I do know that this stuff is going to stay in my system for like two weeks or something like that, and I didn't realize that until I looked it up. So I was worried for the first few hours, but they were like basically fine. After we got some food, I felt even better, so I shouldn't have maybe taken that and not eaten a snack right away. <laughs> but since I know that this stuff stays in the system a little longer than just like, you know, 24 hours or something like that to release the egg, I was most worried about like how it would progress throughout the night and then when I woke up the next morning, but I feel fine. I feel good this morning. There's no cramping happening. There's no nausea, nothing like that. So I got up and I got a mini workout in actually because I wasn't sure if I was going to be able to do that depending on how I felt. As far as the injection site goes, I've got a little bit of a bruise, which isn't bad at all. It's not like bulging or anything like that. And it's definitely sensitive to the touch, like it is a bruise. But the lady taking my blood yesterday also bruised me a little bit around here. I'm really excited that the IUI is in the afternoon versus like early morning today so I can do my normal things, pump out some stuff, do some journaling, things like that. Get some work done um, before we go in because it totally knocked me out last time and I didn't expect that because of the intense cramps that I felt after. So I'm gonna ask if the intense cramps after are normal or if there's anything to be concerned about. I know they're gonna say no, but I wanna ask. But I know that I won't feel very energized afterwards so I'm glad that I can have up until the mid-afternoon to get normal things done and then I'm just gonna give myself off the rest of the day which is great so I don't know when I'll next see you but uh oh I'm nervous another second are you on mm -hmm. we're thinking baby right now we're thinking baby we're right now right somewhere in that region right there the region what do you think little Jimmy or Susie What's your bet? Susie. Yeah. By the way, when we say those names, we don't actually mean we're gonna use those names. Well, Colloquial for he's boy or been girl. saying for years. I'm in a little bit of pain right now. Yeah. And I'm anticipating it getting worse. But what's different is last time. I think I was just so high on adrenaline because it was just so new and the office was so big that I didn't feel anything until I got in the car. Right. And it rushed, but it was pretty immediate, like slow ramp up, but it's staying like okay, consistent. around here. Last time I couldn't speak. Yeah, I, I remember it just ramped up like all of a sudden. I'm sure it might, or maybe it won't. Clearly I can speak through the pain right now. Yeah. It's just like- It's uncomfortable? Uncomfortable period cramps, okay. but not like what I call a period cramp attack, okay. where I'm just like sweating and moaning. Thumbs up for rock and roll. Thumbs up, you guys. Well, hello my friends. It is hours later and I have not moved from this spot on the couch specifically. I called my mom and talked to her for a bit and filled her in and I realized that I never filled you guys in. I think Jack took a clip right after when we were still in the doctor's office. So after Jack took that clip, I could feel the pain starting to get a little bit worse, but it wasn't like a massive ramp up, but the pain definitely started way sooner than it did last time. I think I hear Jack actually. This savage. Did she run out? Yeah. <laughs> Look at her. But yes, after that, I think I laid on the table for how much longer after you took that Probably clip? Probably there for like 10 minutes and then. 10 minutes and then I definitely Ooh. felt the pain starting to get worse. I was wondering if I would just feel kind of like a dull pain this time versus like an onslaught of just really bad breathe through, meditate through type of cramping because the experience was slightly different in that I felt pain sooner than I did the other time, but it definitely started getting worse and I could definitely tell and I didn't want to sit there. I didn't know if they needed the room or I don't know. I just didn't. I wanted to go in like my own car, in my own space, and just breathe and hum it out. And that's exactly what I did. I remember looking up at the clock and it was 2.16 when we left the office. And by 2.36, 20 minutes later, I was feeling way better. Like when I say like meditating and humming through the pain, it was everything I could do to just 
lean into it, accept it, and also just keep in my mind that it's temporary. I think when you're in that much pain, it's so hard to keep in mind that it is temporary. Like I feel like it was gonna go on forever. But I did get to ask my doctor, for those of you wondering about just like pain and experiencing cramping and all of that, I asked my doctor this time if um, severe cramping after was normal because the doctor that did our first IUI said you might experience a little cramping and I'm like, this is more than a little cramping. <laughs> like it's, it's excruciating. But this doctor said that yes, absolutely. There can be some really bad cramping. Some women don't experience cramps at all. It's totally a spectrum and totally depends on the individual, but my cramps at least subside by 20 minutes. I think last time was about like 10 to 15 minutes, but it subsided eventually. So that's really good. And I didn't, I don't have any for the rest of the day. So I'm just really glad that it's drawn out and just in a little spurt, but it definitely takes it out of me. I'm like sweating, I'm shaking. Like it, there's, it's a lot, but it's just for a short period of time. And I find myself with my hand kind of over my belly and just like thinking this is worth it. Like this is worth it. This is so worth it. And it totally gets me through. I asked Jack what it's like for him to just like watch me in pain in the car. It sucks. No, cause you're like, you're helpless. There's literally like nothing you can do. Yeah. And so Mac is just there moaning in pain and you're just kind of like, I'm here too. <laughs> Not in pain, but I'm with you in spirit. Go us. I think. We're um, doing this together, totally. Totally together. I told Jack literally the best thing that he can do in those moments is just like, giving me the time and not rushing me to like move, drive the car, do anything. Like I just need to be still until it's over. And he never pressures me. He clears his schedule. Like we don't have to get back for work or a call or anything. So it's like just knowing that I can sit there for as long as it takes is just enough. So that's always what helps me. And then when I'm coherent enough, I have him scroll through TikToks and just like show me the TikToks <laughs> and until the rest of it subsides. But yeah, that was our experience. Now it's the two week wait. So I hate this part because one, you're waiting for two weeks, but in the meantime, my fertility clinic advises that you pretend and act as though you're pregnant. So I don't want to eat sushi. I wouldn't want to drink alcohol. I want to watch, not that I drink a ton of caffeine. I asked them at some point about like my two cups a day and they are not very concerned about that. But then what sucked last time is like the two weeks of kind of restricting my favorite things. A craft beer or sushi. You guys know they're like my favorite things. Turned out to be for like nothing, you know? So it's always just bittersweet. It's like exciting and it's totally worth it if it works, but it really sucks if it's like for nothing. So it's just kind of like a double-edged sword there, but I think I'm going to end the second IUI vlog here and I will catch you guys for when we test in two weeks and I'll make that because I know I'm going to probably take multiple tests if we're being honest less than like the last time. So I love you all very, very much. If you have watched all the way to the end of this video, make sure to hit the subscribe button because I would love to grow a little community around cheering each other on through this journey, your journey, everyone's journey. Everyone, don't forget to give this video a big old thumbs up and we'll catch you in the next one, my friends. We'll see you later. Bye.